our first race as a team and my first race in the real world threw everything at us. Battles for podium positions, light contact, not so light contact, technical issues, penalties and whatever this is. It's safe to say we experienced the full emotional roller coaster that comes with endurance racing. It's a cliche, I know, but experiencing it for real from the inside lends a whole new perspective and a good story. Like many of my races online, it was a little messier than I'd have liked. The Enduro KA five hours of Donington was my first experience of racing outside of the sim. I joined Tom and Toby from Gridfinder and filmmaker Darren S. Cook in what can only be described as the orangest car on the grid for a short 300 minute taster of the kind of madness we can expect for the rest of the season. Darren and Toby have plenty of club racing experience, but Tom and I are complete novices, save for a few thousand hours of playing with Sims. So despite showing good pace in testing, Toby kept a level head. Listen, I'm gonna say exactly the same that we said a month ago when we were at Donington. We have to finish this race. I don't care where we finish. We need to make sure everyone keeps out of the gravel, keeps it clean, no mechanical issues. If we get to the end, that's a win for us. Of course, Murphy's Law struck early. Right, there's an issue with your fire extinguisher, you can't go out. The extinguisher system lost pressure. I would like you to go back to the garage, please. Yeah. So they can get that sorted out. Impeccable timing. The guys from Graves Motorsport, who built and are engineering the car, managed to swap out the system in record time. And in the end, we didn't miss a single second of qualifying, though it was very close. Every driver needs to set three lap times to be allowed to drive during the race. So Tom, Darren and myself set out early with the objective of ticking that particular box. Space, come on. Qualifying itself, a bit tough, busy. Um, I didn't get a clean lap. Bits of my laps were excellent, but you might be halfway around what you feel is a really strong lap. And you know, I'm looking at the delta in the car and thinking, okay, this is gonna be a good representative time. And then you just hit a traffic jam and you're out of luck. And that's compounded by the fact that our strategy was predicated on putting the fastest guy in the car for the longest. Having met the minimum lap requirements and burned off some of our starting fuel, we threw Toby into the car for the final 25 minutes of the session. Yeah, pretty difficult. I mean, getting a clear run is half the battle. I think if you can do that, then, um, then you give yourself a chance. Finding space in a 48 car field on the Donington National Circuit is far from trivial, but find space he did. Absolutely over the moon with that. that. That is, I got everything I could have got out of the car. And uh, that's actually, it's quicker than we went in testing. It's, um, you know, quickest in the team, obviously, which is always a little plus. 18th position means that there's 30 cars behind you, which is an achievement to celebrate. But there's still 17 teams in front. And if you want to move forward during the race, you're going to have to fight for it. Toby took the first stint and immediately got into the thick of it gradually picking his way through the pack to the outskirts of the top 10. Let's just keep, keep the car as pristine as it is at the moment. It looks great, we don't want to put any dents in it. <laughs> so of course, the inevitable happened. I'd got through on the inside of someone at Redgate, had a bit of a drag race down towards the Craner curves. I had a, a slight overlap, so I thought I'd best give him some space but then felt a little tap on the, uh, the left rear of my car. And of course, at that point, on the outside of the craters, that, that's only ever going to end one way. So I spun across the track at about 60 miles an hour, heading backwards down the hill. Just as I saw the gravel coming, I thought, right, foot off the brake, because I don't want to roll this. Uh, and ended up actually just being able to skim over the top of the gravel and keep it going. A lucky escape. And thanks to Toby's quick thinking, we didn't lose much time. And I suspect that it lit a bit of a fire inside him as well. The rest of the stint was a charge through the field into the top 10. And thanks to a handful of drivers pitting under the first safety car of the day, Toby brought the car into the pits in second place. Check the tyres. I got out of the car and um, I, I knew I'd, I'd overtaken a few people. Darren said, well done P2, and it stopped me in my tracks. 
Tom was next into the fray in his first ever race stint. The stopper pushed us down into the mid-teens, so once again we were in the thick of the action, and he got straight to it. The sim racing definitely helps. You know, there's lots of people that would scoff at the idea of sim racing having any effect on real racing, but there is no doubt in my mind that the reason that I was as confident as I was with overtakes is because, yes, they're virtual, but I have done hundreds before in similar cars on this track. It can't prepare you for the fear factor, the adrenaline, but you've been through those kind of tactical thoughts before and, um, and planned and executed overtakes. Halfway into the 75 minute stint and we were once again inside the top 10 in 10th. There were some scary moments. There were some moments where I hit the brake and the car in front of me got closer and closer and closer and I pressed the brake harder and harder and harder and I was like, oh my God, am I about to hit them into the chicane? But no, we, uh, we came up unscathed. With the field a little bit more spread out than in the early stages, the remainder of the stint was less eventful. And by our second stop, the objective of just get it to the finish, don't worry about your position, was starting to take a back seat. When we came here, we decided that we just wanted to finish the race. That was our goal, that was our aim, and we achieved that. And I think between us, secretly, we were like, oh, maybe a top half would be nice. I certainly had loftier goals, but we'll get to that. Stopping out of sequence with the pack had put us outside of the top 20, which left Darren with plenty of work to do. Things started well and Darren got stuck in immediately, making good use of his experience to fight past and to capitalize on other drivers' mistakes, putting us higher and higher up the timing screen. But other drivers' mistakes were soon to prove costly. A couple of things happened. We didn't have comms in the car. That was a massive hindrance to us. A radio failure earlier in the day had left us at a disadvantage, especially when it came to strategy. The safety cars are, are off putting, I'm not going to lie. It does frustrate you a lot when you're not pedal to the metal kind of thing, but I think you've just got to get over it. Remember, you're in a car, you're doing a job. Darren's stints were blessed with three safety car periods, which allowed other teams to get their final stop out of the way early. We opted for an equal time split between the drivers because track time and experience for Tom and myself was more important than our final finishing position. But that meant that we ended up pitting under green flag conditions, losing significant time. I had shown really good pace in testing, but the responsibility of bringing the car home unscathed was weighing heavily on my mind as I took to the track. We have to finish this race. I don't care where we finish. We need to make sure everyone keeps out of the gravel, keeps it clean, no mechanical issues. If we get to the end, that's a win for us. I took this advice seriously and planned to take a measured approach, but unbeknownst to me, things were about to spiral. As I passed the start line on my third lap, our pit board told me to come in. With no radio, I presumed we had a mechanical issue, but the team waved me through. A mistake maybe, or was it a drive-through? The next lap saw the pit board out again, reading pit in. My heart sank. This time, I was pointed to a flag marshal at the end of the pit lane and a stop and go penalty we had to serve. It's impossible to describe the mixture of emotions you feel at a moment like that. Our egalitarian strategy and two unplanned trips to the pit lane had dropped us well outside of the top 20, and I felt entirely responsible, even though I didn't know what had triggered the penalty in the first place. But I still had a job to do, and I treated the rest of the race with more caution than perhaps I would have otherwise, lest I draw further ire from the stewards. The chequered flag fell quickly, and I had plenty of fun along the way, but it's not how I wanted things to end in P27 out of 48. Toby met me outside of scrutineering. We have finished our first race. What the fuck were all those penalties, man? Track limits, but we'll, we'll debrief. We'll debrief. What? Track limits? How could it be track limits? I'd been so careful and we hadn't even received a warning, except we had. Due to the communication issues, we were unaware that we'd picked up a handful of track limit violations during the race. And I went into the stint with our car already carrying 15 seconds worth of post-race time penalties. Unfortunately, we didn't know that. In Enduro KA, the penalties for repeat offenses scale upwards, so, well, you know the rest of the story. And if you're wondering, it was this fairly innocuous looking moment that triggered the stop and go. It's difficult having this sort of mixed feeling at the moment because driving out there was an absolute rush. 
felt amazing. It was great to overtake other cars. It was great to battle with other drivers. But we picked up a couple of late penalties that perhaps could have been avoided. And it's hard not to be a bit tough on yourself for that. Honestly, I feel like to some extent I've let down the team and that's that's a new thing to experience because even in team sim racing events, it's not quite as much on the line. While I was doing a terrible job of putting on a brave face after the race, the rest of the guys were frankly outstanding teammates. Chris, well done, mate. It was really hard, mate. And I'm well proud of you. Good job. Good job, mate. Good job. You brought it home, mate. Well done. I think you were shit. Thanks, Chaz. Much appreciated. Oh my God, what a fucking day. That was absolutely incredible. I am so proud of Toby, Tom and Chris. Proud of myself. It was a top day. Fantastic. It was awesome, wasn't it? I mean, we said at the start, we want to get the car home. We want to finish the first race. We want the car in one piece. We've ticked all of those boxes. So as a team effort, I couldn't be happier. It was incredible. It was, it, yeah, it's happened. It's happened. Five hours, 42 cars, 200 drivers, of which some of them should definitely be sectioned. But I think we have to be proud that we made it to the end. I can just wait till the uh, joviality is all on. Chris, look. <laughs>